So it is written, after this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There, he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius has ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a, ten, a tent maker, as they were, he, say, he stayed and worked with them. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jew and Greek. When Silas and Timothy came from Macedonia, Paul devoted himself exclusively to preaching, testifying to the Jew that Jesus was the Messiah. But when they opposed Paul, he became abusive. He shook out his clothes in protest and said to them, your blood be on your own hands, uh, heads. I am innocent of it. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went next door to the house of Titus, Justus, a worshipper of God, Crispus, the synagogue leader, and his entire household believed in the Lord. And many of the Corinthians who hear Paul believed and were baptized. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do, be, do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one is going to attack and harm you, because I have made many people in this city. So, Paul stayed in Corinth for a year and a half, teaching them the word of God. While Gallio was a proconsul of Achaia, the Jew of Corinth made a united attack on Paul and brought him to the place of judgment. This man, the charge is persuading the people to worship God in ways contrary to the law. You see here how they wanted to keep the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Galileo said to them, If you do were making a complaint about some misdemeanor or serious crime, it would be reasonable for me to listen to you. But since it involves question about words and names and your law, your own law, settled the matter yourself. I will not be judge of such things. So he drove them off. Then the crowd, then they turned on Sosthenes, the synagogue leaders and beat him in front of the proconsul, and Galileo showed no concern whatever. We saw then in uh, verse 18, Paul stayed in, the con in Corinth for some time, then he left uh, the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria. Syria. Accompanied by Priscilla and Achilla, before he sailed, he had uh, his hair cut off at uh, Sanchrea because of a vow he had taken. Okay, we saw Isaiah as well uh, saying approximately the same thing. And we do not keep the law. And if you keep the law, the those who pretend to be Christian will persecute you to make you believe that you want, you want to keep the law and salvation is by doing something and plus believing and you're going to be persecuted. So this uh, Isaiah 28, 11, 12 says, For with uh, stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to these people. We see here as well the, the tongue, the signs are not for those who believe, but for the unbelievers. To whom he said, this is the, 
the 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 greatest things uh, which with you may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear they are really stubborn as well and jesus gave signs of his deity in the gospel of john according to the chapter 20 30 31 one moment it is written and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that ye might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name a sign was more than a miracle it was a miracle that pointed or authentic uh, oh, how do you say this authenticated a special uh, message a sign was more than a miracle that was pointing or uh, that uh, an authentication that this message this this, spe- oh God, <laughs> this special message is really important and true it's mod it's something like only god can do that tongues were a god given sign to the jew that new testament truth is true not to those who believe they didn't needed it because they were believing and they were the that's no doubt lord you say this and i i receive it that's it i don't question what you're saying because you are god you are no man but you should lie i trust you and my trust is in you you say something i don't need sign i believe by faith faith and the jew in the new testament they wanted sign the verse by verse commentary dot uh, com slash acti- articles slash doctrine slash tongue dash a dash transition dash issue in act then you will see all the elements the tongue were from god that was a sign and everything that uh, the, the the jew needed because they were unbelievers they were under the law and the law was demanding they were under a curse and here we see the purpose of speaking in foreign languages what we call tongue was to prove to the jew in the first century that the new testament was the authentication authentic word of god the destruction of jerusalem in 7080 signaled that god turned his attention to the gentiles according to the book of luke 21 uh, 2024 today god's purpose for the jew is now obedience and his purpose for the gentiles is in the ascendancy tongue are signs and signs to the jew in the book of acts jesus is resurrected they are sitting together and the holy spirit come that was pentecost they received the holy spirit and peter goes out in the chapter 2 and is preaching he is preaching to the jew and there's a miracle taking place act 2 we read it is written and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly 
there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jew, devoted, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they, that every man heard them speak. In his own language. This is the gift of tongue. So, for example, uh, I am speaking uh, German, French, uh, some uh, other languages from the Caribbean, and I'm speaking English, uh, Danish. But now, if someone from uh, Italy is coming in context. If someone in Italy is coming and I am in Pentecost and the Holy Spirit is coming, then I'm able to speak with this person in, uh, in Italian. So this is the miracle of the gift of tongue. Or even someone's coming in uh, from uh, Russia, I will be able to speak with this person in, uh, in his own language. And this is what happened there. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these uh, which speak Galileans? And how here we, every man in our own language, where are we, we were born? By chance and made us and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in all the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jew, and proselytes, Crete, and Arabian. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful word of God. And they were all amazed, and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Or what does it mean? I don't understand. How, do, how can those people suddenly speak our, our own language? And they, they knew they, they didn't have it before, a couple of days before they didn't have it. Now in Pentecost, suddenly a big crush over the house where they were gathered together and the Holy Spirit came with the gift of tongue. Now they are about to speak in any languages Crete, Arameans, and whatsoever, Greek, and uh, even Asia. But other smoking said, these men are full of new wine. And it's interesting because in this hour, this is the 11th hour. It cannot be that somebody is full of wine, uh, in this hour. But Peter standing in the verse 14, we say that Peter, we saw that uh, uh, Peter standing and is uh, with the eleven lifted uh, his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this know unto you and hearken to my, to my word. For this, uh, verse 15, for this are not wanton, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's early in the morning. It's the third hour of the day, according to verses 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass... 
In the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He didn't say I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh.